Hello, Dragon Tank 1400 here, and in today's video, we're going to talk about Ruby and its six protagonists. Now, first of all, you may be thinking, well, Ruby only has one protagonist, and that's Ruby. However, I would argue that Ruby actually has six protagonists, and that's Ruby as the main one, and then you have Weiss, Yang, Blake, Jean, and Oscar. Now, I'll get into why I think each one of these are protagonists as the video progresses here. However, let's just start with Ruby and why she's like the main protagonist. So what defines a protagonist is really, in the story, they're not only just the main character or main characters, however, their goal directly influences the plot of the story itself. The plot of the story itself is really being to stop Salem from attaining the relics and, and doing whatever she wants to do to destroy the world or whatever she wants to do to take over the world. Another aspect is, is that the character grows throughout the story. They have like some struggle, if you will. And another aspect is that they have some kind of antagonist. It doesn't have to be a person. It can be like a force or like something else. Like in some stories, it can be like just them stranded in the wilderness or stranded in the desert and the antagonist in that scene is actually the environment itself. So some kind of antagonist that stops the protagonist from reaching their whatever their goals are. are. So I say Ruby is the main protagonist of the story. From what we know her main goal is actually just to help people in general. She just even at the cost of her own life. And Salem, as far as we know, and actually described as Ruby herself and described as others and as we see her, just likes to use people and really doesn't care who she destroys herself. So Salem kind of just really wants to destroy everyone, if you will, and Ruby wants to protect everyone, even at the cost of her own life. Whereas this is a little different than John, because John simply did right now just wants to protect his friends and most likely his family as well. Which is there's a difference in that Salem's not necessarily targeting Jean and his friends or, or, or Ruby and her friends. She's targeting really the whole world uh, to get what she wants. So as you can see, like Ruby wants to kind of just save the entire world, save everyone. And Salem kind of wants to take over the world at the cost of innocent life. So doesn't care who she gets in the way. So that's kind of why Ruby is like the main protagonist. You see directly contradicts Salem's goals as far as we know them and this is kind of still early and they're in both Ruby and Salem's like plot character development so we don't know exactly uh, what's going on with them however from like the show how it's presented itself how much screen time Ruby has got how much interaction she's got with all the other characters and and really Salem and how Salem's this big bad if you will that we haven't seen yet it's pretty clear that Ruby is the main protagonist of the, of the story of Ruby and Salem is the main antagonist of that, of, of this story. As far as we know right now, now that could change. Now I talked a little bit about Jean here and I already talked about him in a video. Now his main goal is to really protect his friends and his friends are going to be the one that stops Salem. That's kind of how his main goal interferes with the main plot, really drives the main plot. And his growth as a character is kind of obvious with uh, him being like kind of selfless at the selfish at the beginning him growing to be selfless and protecting his friends and all that his main antagonist is cinder and i already explained why in another video now i kind of skipped ahead here ruby's growth hasn't really happened yet as a character she hasn't really grown much she's grown a little bit however i suspect that coming up uh later on this is still an ongoing series so the next character I want to talk about is Blake. Now Blake's plot is mostly done. There's still some stuff to clear up with Adam and still some stuff to clear up like over time with the Faunus being equal to the humans if you will. That is really Blake's main goal is for the Faunus and humans to be equal. She wants equality more than anything else. Now. How this relates to the main plot is that really dealing with the White Fang, an organization she was once a part of, and once really got its roots in wanting this equality for between finest and humans, however, has gone astray due to Adam and Adam's like dealings actually with Salem and everything has created this um, a way for Blake's plot to actually interfere with the main plot. 
And we saw that really uh, come come around at the end of season five, where Blake's interactions, her she wanted to do the goals of uh, really just say, uh, saving the faunus and having and and the humans and having them create equal, and stopping Adam's like rampage against humanity, if you will, and bringing back the White Fang to one uh, to the peaceful organization it once was. By doing this. She directly interfered with Salem's plan of getting one of the relics, which is the whole story of the, um, which is, which, which is the whole like plot, the whole story that the, the good guys want to stop Salem from gaining these relics. And she didn't even know she was doing it. So that's kind of how her plot interferes with the main plot. And that's why she's like a protagonist. The other aspects of a protagonist of her having an antagonist, that's Adam, who's completely against her goals and wants to stop them. Adam doesn't want equality. He wants to rule over humanity. He thinks humans should be the finest as slaves. So that ideology directly interferes with Blake's ideology of wanting to be equal. And therefore, Adam is Blake's main antagonist in the story. The last thing about character growth is that um, Blake learned to forgive from the at uh, the end of the story. Uh, well, not the end. It, really, uh, towards the end of season five here, she learned to forgive those who have wronged her in the past and hum humans to be uh, in humans as well. At first in the story, we kind of see her untrusting against humans and this kind of stuff. She even hid the fact that she's a faunus and all this stuff. And towards the end of the story. I say end of the story. I meant the end towards of like volume four and volume five. She learned to actually forgive Ileana, Ilya. Sorry, I, I, I didn't mean Ileana. Ilya, of doing wrong and um, really kind of betraying her and wanting to really kill her parents and stuff like that. So really good character growth for Blake. Uh, unfortunately, her character growth is pretty much done at this point, but her plot really isn't because Adam's still around and. Humans and Faunus aren't equal yet, however the White Fang is there. So Blake's an example of a protagonist in the story whose story is almost complete. Which does make sense since they kind of started with uh, Blake's plot at the end of Season 1. So she was the first one out of the main characters who kind of had their plot really started there. I mean, you could argue Jean, you could argue a little bit of Ruby, and maybe Weiss. Actually, Weiss's plot didn't really start until season two though she did get character growth and uh, I'm gonna talk about Yang shortly here speaking of Yang her main goal at the beginning of the se series was to find her mom now later on it changed to like help Ruby which sounds like a support character however after thinking about it for a while and like watching like the end of volume 5 again and again and stuff like that I think it's actually her main goal I mean, her go one of her goals is to help Ruby, but her main goal is actually to kind of save her mom, if you will. And when I say save, I what I mean by that is to really reunite with her her mother, Raven, in such a way that she she gets Raven's love and she be uh, Raven becomes the mother that Yang wants her to become. We kind of see this at the end of Volume 5 where Yang is actually um, lecturing Raven and Raven actually says, you're lecturing me. And we, we really get to see that Yang understands her mom. And, and at the end of it, she actually doesn't reveal that Raven is the Spring Maiden. She just says she's, she was gone. Like and, and that kind of further thing that Yang doesn't, Yang's main goal isn't directly to help Ruby, but it's actually to really reunite with her mom. And at this point, Raven's goals isn't to really reunite with her daughter. And that's what kind of Yang wants to get out of it. Now, how this relates to the main plot is, well, since Raven's a spring maiden, she's directly influenced on the main plot. And this actually helped Yang to gain one of the relics. Now, this kind of seems kind of stretching how this could be part of like the main plot however this story isn't over yet like we don't know how raven's interactions with yang or how yang is actually interactions with raven is going to interfere with salem's main goals we do know that raven's against salem and we do know that she's a spring maiden and that this actually helped yang get the uh relic of knowledge from 
uh, from Haven Academy. However, we don't know much about else about that, but I'm going to give Yang the benefit of the doubt here and say that she is a protagonist. Now, the other thing is that she grew in the in really in uh, volume five here. At first, she was just take everything head on, and and we got to see that when she uh, really confronted her mom at the abandoned camp, she took things head on there. She didn't really learn her lesson. However, during the final battle against like. Uh, Mercury and Emerald, she actually uh, took the smart way and just uh, lost her arm in, or, in, order, in order to get to, uh, to where the relic was being held, in order to get to Cinder, Raven, and Renar. Yang also took this smart path against Raven, her mother, instead of actually trying to fight Raven head on, which she realized that she could never do since Raven's very powerful. She actually taught, figured out a way to talk uh, to her mom, and talk her mom into giving her the relic of knowledge. So Yang has obviously grew. Now her goal being related to the main plot, we really don't know exactly yet how that's going to work out. However, we we are going to um, see more of that down the line. So I'm going to give her the benefit of now, doubt and say she's a protagonist. Now, of course, her antagonist is actually, I didn't talk about this, but it's actually her mother, which is directly relates to her main plot, I mean, her main goal, and those two do have opposing ideologies and about helping people and about what family actually is. Their plot is like more about helping family and Raven's like skew attitude towards family and really selfishness and self selflessness and all that stuff but we'll see more of that down the line now the next person i want to talk about is weiss now weiss's main goal is to really bring, restore a family name that her father has destroyed her father is her main antagonist we'll see that more in the um the atlas arc which is the next arc of the series and we don't know how this main goal is going to interfere with the main plot it could be that her dad is actually working for Salem. There's so many things that it, that it, it could be, but in reality, we don't know. And uh, I'm just gonna give Weiss the benefit of not doubt that she's a protagonist because of how much growth she has had throughout the series. It's even stated in, in volume five that she has become nice and she's become closer to her friends and all this stuff. Whereas volume one, she was really high maintenance. She was uh, a really, mean to her friends and she was just mean in general however now she's actually being described as nice so she has really changed a lot throughout the um she's had a lot of character growth throughout the series so that's why i'm going to give her a pass on that uh that's just stating that she's a protagonist even though we haven't seen that as well as even yang and especially like blake or jean or even ruby at this point so the last character I want to talk about is Oscar. Now, Oscar may be stretching it a bit, e even more than Weiss and even more than Yang. However, I think um, Oscar is definitely a protagonist in Ruby, as we'll learn to see going on. Right now, his main antagonist is Hazel. And I believe that Oscar is actually going to convince Hazel to uh, join the good guys at some point. But that's like another theory for another day. However, like Hazel's main um, grief is actually with Osbin, and perhaps over time, Oscar's main antagonist will actually be Osbin. That would be a, a um, that'd be an interesting like twist, if you will, in the story. We really don't know where Oscar's character is going to go. We don't know really what his main goal is yet. He hasn't stated it, or we haven't seen enough of him to know that. We don't know who his main antagonist is. We know right now Hazel is an antagonist. Perhaps Osman at one point. I think they're leading it towards that. So it's very early in his story in Ruby. So early that we can't really judge for sure if he's a protagonist or not. But I'm going to give him the benefit of doubt because it just seems like they're going that way. I mean, they they already put him up against Hazel directly. Um, he has like so much interaction. Um, he has so much potential really with um, him and Osbin and he's already had some uh, really good character growth in volume 5 and 
and his conversation with Ruby and all that. It just seems like they're going that way, which is why I'm going to give Oscar the benefit of the doubt. I mean, he really is the everyman in the story, whereas in volume one, it was Jean, and now Oscar's the everyman, and Osben's actually the paradigm character, which is a really interesting concept, if you will. Now, how all this turns out, I don't know, but I'm just going to give Oscar, like I have given Weiss and Yang, the benefit of doubt and, doubt and call them protagonists in the story. Now, we won't really know who the exactly the protagonists are of the story until the end. A safe bet is actually, it's not actually Ruby. The safest bet is actually Blake at this point. We know she's a protagonist. We know she's not the protagonist. And I believe Ruby to be the protagonist. And then John has some really good evidence towards it. Yang does. Weiss and Oscar have some evidence towards it. Less than um, the other characters. Now, why am I mentioning these six and not, say, Ren or Nora or some other characters? Well, Ren and Nora are really support characters. Uh, they even state that their main goal is to actually, their whole reason going on to this quest to help Ruby, whereas John actually says we all have our own reasons uh, to go on this quest. You just gave us the courage to go on it. So it was, John gave a completely different answer, a completely different statement of why he went on this journey. It was obviously, though Ren and Norma, they had other things in mind, their main reason was to help Ruby out, who is the main protagonist of the story, which would make them support characters. Now, Ren didn't kind of get his own mini arc at the end of volume four. However, uh, though that was an obstacle for them to get into Mistro, it it was didn't have anything to do with the main plot. Like that was just a boss at the end of a volume. Like it's not like Salem sent that thing to stop them that didn't happen at all and we know it didn't happen since that's that's that Grimm's like home we saw like it's cave and everything so we 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 know that didn't happen we we know like it had like really nothing to do with the main plot it was just a way for a support character to get some character development and some character growth which is always fun when a support character actually grows and gets some development and depth to their character not death, depth. I'm kind of saying it a little weird, but and the microphone isn't picking up as good as it should. Uh, that's kind of why Ren and Nora are not protagonists. And the same can be said with Priya. She was really a support character for Jean. She got a little bit of character development at volume three. However, um, it seemed her main goal was actually to help Jean improve throughout the series. I mean, it was also to become a, a huntress and become and to help people however it really her main focus in that in in the series was to help Jean um, become a hunter become become uh, a fighter if you will whereas someone like Crow and Osben are more like paradigm characters in the sense that they're just kind of guiding and teaching the protagonists or even the, some of the support characters um, to grow and to become better fighters and to kind of lead them on this journey. Kind of what Gandalf was in Lord of the Rings, if you will, or Dumbledore was in Harry Potter. They aren't protagonists, they are helping the protagonists and they are paradigm characters. And if you don't know what a paradigm character is, they are a character that already has already grown a ton so they're already very experienced they have really good fighter fighting capabilities if it's like a fighting story if you were a really great knowledge it depends on the story and they seem to know stuff that the uh, protagonists don't know and their job is actually just to help the protagonist grow and to get to like the next level and to kind of fight the bad guy if you will so um, I'm not going to get into like every character and whether or not why they're like a more of a support character, antagonist, protagonist or whatever. I think if I, I discuss this topic enough and I have a previous video where I focus on um, 
Cinder being Jean's main antagonist because I just thought that was really interesting. I'll probably do a future video on Oscar and Osben, but I might wait until some like more volumes come out to get some more information on that or I might do like just a mini video on it because I think it's so interesting. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. See you in the next one. Bye.